Hi everyone, it's Heidi from flutterbyheidi.co.uk and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based here in the United Kingdom in the West Midlands, uh, Warwickshire to be exact. Anyway, today I've got a lovely little treat project for you. Um, another one using the fabulous Honeybee stamp set um, and some of the beautiful paper um, that you can get for free during celebration, um, which is called Golden Honey. And that is... Uh, lovely uh, gold foil accented paper and um, here's some samples just to show you so again double sided um, but lovely monochrome designs on one and a foiled accent on the second so as you can see here lovely bees and flowers and those really echo the um, images that are in the the stamp set um, and when I was um, playing around with this it just reminded me of um, some uh, Elizabeth Shaw mint crisps um, which uh, are, are rather, rather a favourite of mine so this is a little box to hold some of them now usually they come in a big box like this um, and uh, they're dark you can get dark chocolate or, or milk chocolate ones here in the UK but they kind of slop around and they're not terribly exciting but you don't always want to as a little thank you to give but necessarily that this is a whole box um, but this is a little treat size box which just holds nine of them which is just perfect and they are they do have like a little honeycomb on the top so I thought it was a perfect match uh, for this um, and uh, then I've used one of the new punches uh, and then I can't remember the name of it is it timeless anyway this is the punch and the punch I've used it, I'll probably get a big reflection now off um, let me show you on the, on the reverse um, like reflection off my lights the great thing about this punch if I can get it right uh, probably not anyway is that actually as well as the, there you go as well as the punch main bit you've it punches a hole and a slot so you could use it for any punch um, where you just wanted to add a hole or a slot at the end so that's the punch I've used for the top there and then these are just some of the waste from the die cuts I've used um, but you obviously you could cut out some little hexagons or add some diamantes if you wanted so that's our project let's get started so um, to start off with then, um, I'll perhaps change the colourway up a little bit actually, perhaps we'll, to make it easy for you to see the scoring, it's obviously not always easy on the dark cardstock, so we'll use some Whisper White, and because it's a small box you can use either the Thick Whisper White or the Standard Whisper White, either would work just as well for this, because it's a small project it doesn't need to be quite so rigid. So you will need a um, piece of cardstock and you can get two of these boxes out of a standard sheet of A4. I'll work in centimetres today um, and, and I'll pop the inch conversions onto my blog as well for you. So first of all cut your sheet of cardstock at 14 and a half centimetres and then we're going to trim that down and you will just need to put your extender arm out to do this to 15 and a half centimetres and obviously keep the scrap for a little bit of stamping later so this is now your longer edge and you want to score this long edge at very straightforward two and a half just flip it round and score at 13 then you're going to score on the short edge, so this is the 14 and a half centimetre edge at two and a half, at six, at eight and a half, and at twelve. Pop that to one side, that's all the scoring done on that. Now you're going to need some layers. Um, and I've used some millimetres um, on this one to get a really narrow layer, but I'll just do that um, on this one. I'm going to go slightly, um, uh, slightly wider layers. So I'm going to cut my piece of cardstock at 10 centimetres and then cut a piece that's three centimetres. That's our first layer. And then I want two pieces that are two centimetres. the 
paper I'm going to use. Um, and this is actually already cut at nine and a half centimetres. So I'm going to then cut that at, um, a, you want a piece that is uh, two and a half centimetres. So I'm just doing that on the right hand side here. So two and a half centimetres. And then you want two pieces which are um, one and a half centimetres. Uh, yes, that's right. Yes. One half. Just check, yeah. That's fine. I just second guessed myself there. There we go. So, those are our layers. So, doesn't use very much in the way of DSP. Great for using up those little scraps that you happen to have hanging around. So now to create our box and add our layers. So we'll quickly just gently reinforce this. And then we're, we're going to add our layers. I'm still waiting for my snail to come. So I'm having to use either my snail or some other roller glue that I happen to have. So these pieces, these narrower pieces are for the front and the back. And uh, as, as always with our box making, wherever you can add your layers before you actually um, put your box together, just makes life a little bit easier. So with our box, what this is going to do is it's actually just a standard rollover box. So the front comes over the top here. So the two panels we're going to be adding are these panels here. And if I can not glue myself to my uh, paper. There we go. Okay. I'm actually getting a right gluey mess. I actually haven't stuck that one on very square at all. Might just be able to lift that. If you're very careful, if you haven't stuck it down too hard, you will be able to just gently lift that. If you've used something like Fuse, it ain't gonna come up. So um, that's where um, it is great to use wet glue because that does give you that little bit of wiggle room um, when you're creating layers. There we go. So those are our layers. And we're going to come in with my, with my snips and our longer pieces are, we're going to cut straight and the smaller ones we're going to tab. So there we go, just cut tabs into those. So again, straight up the, the side of the longer ones. And just notch out. And just a reminder that you know, our notching out is really to, just to take away a little bit of the bulk to help us get um, to not have any sort of bits hanging out. Obviously, because you're um, when you're folding things up, you will find that if you're not careful, you'll get a bit of overlap hanging over. So this is what it'll look like. And then. It's box making, you know me. I do like a bit of red tape when I'm when I'm creating my boxes. So all I'm going to do is add a bit of red tape to the edge of my long tab without the layer on it, like so. And that's so you can get the glue up to the edge and hold it. I'm actually taking the red tape, the, the lining tape off with that one. Okay. Like so. And then on this bit, again, we're going to pop the red tape just at the one end because we've just got a single tab. And this is just to show you. Like so. Now it's up to you, but I actually use my corner rounder as well on this one. I just think it neatens off the back edge of a of a box lid, like so. Okay, so once you've done that, all you've got to do is create our box. So take the tape off one side, fold up the edge, 
And if you line the square edge with the tab, the same on the other side, like so. Keep your tabs folded out until you're ready to start gluing, but just fold up, pinch it closed, fold up and pinch that closed as well. And then for the next piece, fold it all the way over and fold the tab in, then attach your glue. And that way it kind of gives you just enough that it'll close really easily um, without being too, too loose or too tight. So just hold it in place. And that is then ready for us to pop in our little piles of Elizabeth Shawmins. And I just think this looks so much more elegant as a little treat. Great as a little table favour maybe, you know, if you're having folks round, um, you know, and you can then just pop a little box in between a couple of people. So there's our basic box. So that's all that's left is for us to decorate. So what I'm going to do now is use a little bit of, I think this ribbon's actually retired. Um, it's, not, it's just there for decoration rather than to do, to do um, anything too fancy. But it's just a bit of gold accented ribbon that you happen to have. Um, and I've just tied that in a, just a gentle bow. Again, not too tight because you want to be able to slip it off doing a really rubbish job of tying a bow. Right, there we go. Just do their surgeon's knot to start off with, just to hold it that extra loop through. There we go. And just cut off your excess. Now with our little extra piece, we're going to come in with our lovely stamp set. So in this honeybee stamp set, you'll see there's a hello, thank you, celebrate every moment, um, which are just perfect for sort of all sorts of occasions. Um, in fact, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to punch it first. So come in with my punch. Stamp my thank you just up towards the top edge on that. Grab my lovely little bee, fabulous honey bee. And then I've got a couple of little hexag golden hexagons. And I say these are just the waste from when I've cut the hive out with the coordinating die. <laughs> It is perfect for just adding um, these to it. So just popping a spot of glue on the back of those. I need to have glue fun and then just use the spatula end of my Just wiggle those to where you want them. I probably should have started with that one by the wording first. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, and as usual, let's have a little accent. Um, always nice to have a little layer. So again, just punch one out in a contrasting colour. If you've got a bit of gold, that would work well. Cut up the middle. And when you flip that over, just pop some glue down the outer edge and then you can come in with those layers. Add a couple of dimensionals to the back there. I usually just pop one at either end. And there you have a pretty little gift box to say thank you which do you prefer I love the black version and um, you can see the slightly narrower borders but for ease then this one's certainly easier to do in terms of having half centimeter borders 
if you only want two or three mils I'll pop the measurements on there as well but a quick and easy way to gift some um, pretty uh, Elizabeth Shaw mints and great because you get nine in a box and two from one sheet of A4 paper perfect for table favours thanks for watching come back and see me again soon and if you'd like to purchase any of the products pop along to my blog flutterbyheidi.co.uk and follow the links to the products or just go straight to my Stampin' Up shop heidismith.stampinup.net and you'll find a button that says shop thanks for watching bye now